Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're going to talk about the iFi Audio GoPod. This is a Bluetooth DAC amp for IEMs, but not in the sense that I've covered Bluetooth DACs before. You know, I've reviewed ones that are basically like the Quiddle X5K or the XDuo uh, XB2 Balance, which connects wirelessly to your phone, but still uses a traditional headphone jack, Pentacon, whatever it may be. So you're still wired or tethered to something, it's just that your amplifier is now free from your phone gives you some portability but not full. So the other alternative and what people have purchased is TWS uh, earbuds, you know, truly wireless devices that have no wire or tether at all and rely solely on a Bluetooth connection. Now typically when you have an all-in-one system like that, you get better active noise cancellation performance in something called ambient mode. And that's because they can factor in all of the characteristics that the housing of the earbud gives you and know exactly how the microphones are arranged based off of their own design. So when you go with the universal design, there are microphones on this, but because it's a universal system, there are, are no ANC features. There's no ambient mode. It's basically a wireless amp. Now what makes it really cool, you get this huge box. And this thing is not cheap, by the way. This is gonna be, I think, the biggest pressing point for a lot of people. It's $400 for the standalone system, and that does not come with an IEM. Now there are pros and cons to this device. I'm going to kind of go through everything. I didn't fully script this video because um, of what it does. It, it's fairly unique. Fio and a couple other brands have similar things, but this is kind of doing it um, at a higher level, and that's why it costs more. So what's interesting about this, and you open up this lid, and you have this insane LED presentation. It's almost like a LED jewelry box, you know, presenting something really special. So depending on what IEMs you have and if they have any kind of a nice finish to them, it's really going to make them pop. Now at $400, you get a few different hook configurations and the default one is the 0.78 millimeter, which is the most common one. There's no QDC, interestingly, so depending on your IEM design like this Simgot EM6L, the hook is going to stick out a little bit further because it's not recessed into the IEM body itself. You also get MMCX options, which will work on something like uh, the Odyssey Euclid over here, which it gives you swivel, um, so it's you know it just depends again on your IEM. But it also supports Pentacon, it also supports T2. So depending on what brands you have, whether it's Audio Technica, Edimotic, um, things like that, they all use different connectors. So uh, in the box for $400, you get a few, but if you needed those extra special connectors, you can purchase them separately for $30 as an add-on. The hooks themselves are flexible, and if you look at the way this thing opens up, it looks rather tight here, and if I pull this open, I can make it a little bit looser. There's a little bit of a memory wire in there, but it's not as adjustable as something like what I got on universal IEM wires, such as uh, the Antlion Kimura microphone system, which has a very flexible mic. This does hook well around the ear. I'll talk about comfort here in a moment, but it is flexible enough to adapt depending on your ear shape and where the IEM is positioning the wire. As far as the case itself goes, I already mentioned the LED lighting, but you have this kind of cool prism design on the lid. It is a huge case. There's no denying that this case is rather large and you even get um, a battery status light. So when you are charging your IEMs, you can see this kind of illuminate when it's plugged in. Right now I'm at three quarters, obviously. Uh, USB-C, it also supports wireless charging. So if you have a compatible uh, wireless charger, you can place that on there in the right orientation and you don't have to ever use a cable. Battery life, so the Go Pods are seven hours per charge and the case will give you an additional 35 hours so you can kind of top them up. It's quite a long period of time. I expected it to be pretty decent because these things are not too small so there is enough room for a battery. Now the GoPods themselves are IPX5 rated, so they are splash proof slash resistant. So it can rain, you can get sweaty, and you don't have to worry about it failing. IPX5 typically means you can actually have some water flow directly over it, such as a gentle faucet. However, you never want to, uh, one, submerge it, and two, you need to be extra careful in using an IM that is sealed, preferably, because even though the GoPod is sealed and can handle a lot of moisture, you wanna make sure your IEMs uh, themselves can as well. So they're made really well. Now this has a touch sensitive uh, metal finish on the outside. So this top portion here is not touch sensitive. It will light up based off your battery or Bluetooth status. And then the bottom part is actually where you're playing and pausing your music, pressing and holding for assistant. You can double press to uh, advance a track. Um, if you press on the right side, pressing on the left side is going to go back a track. 
And then if you get a phone call, you can actually tap to answer your calls as well because this does have a microphone system in it. Now the volume adjustment took some getting used to and these get plenty loud, but basically all you have to do is press and hold. And when you're in stereo mode, pressing and holding on the right side will boost the volume and you can see the slider go up on your mobile device pressing and holding on the left side will decrease your volume. Now, arguably the most important thing when dealing with a Bluetooth adapter is the codec support. And that's dependent on both this device and your mobile device of choice, because you wanna make sure that you're getting the most out of what you're paying for. They do support enlist LDAC, LHDC, Aptex uh, Adaptive, and uh, SBC and AAC, of course. So the Aptex Adaptive is an interesting thing because I think there was some confusion when this first came out. This does not support LDAC um, or Aptex HD or Aptex low latency. It's adaptive only. And that was kind of a bummer because I bought the uh, new Pixel tablet specifically for testing Bluetooth protocols, including LDAC, because I had other devices that never quite utilized that fully. So on iPhone testing or iOS testing, I should say, AAC worked fine, and when it paired, there is a voice prompt that says AAC, so you know what protocol you're connected to. When I connected to LDAC, initially, it did not work. I had no audio, and I wanna say this because some people are gonna buy this, and because they're not really pushing this as like an app-focused device. It's supposed to just be plug and play and have great sound. Um, it did not work with LDAC properly. I had zero audio. That was for uh, firmware version 1.39. Now I have a link in the description below to take you to the uh, app to download it, but you also have to go to the support page, plug in your serial number and manually download the zip, extract the zip file, and then you are good to go to add it to the app. So I tested version 1.49 and 1.52, which changed the power standby uh, behavior. You know, it used to go to like, 10 minutes plus without getting audio, but now anywhere from like three to 10 minutes, it would auto shut off if there's no sound. They made some bug fixes, and this is all in the last two months, mind you. I've had this for several months, and they've made several changes to it. So the firmware update, and no matter what I tested before with um, disabling LDAC and switching specifically to SBC, which worked fine, and the voice prompt actually said SBC. So I do the firmware update, I'm on 1.52, now LDAC is working perfectly and it sounds noticeably better. Now, as far as sound quality goes, there's a few things that makes this sound as good as it does. And th this is where it kind of gets into its own unique niche of what this product can do. You want to utilize the best codec you can, of course. So after the firmware update, I was using LDAC on uh, my Android device. I'm using the newer uh, Pixel tablet. And on iPhone, of course, I was using AAC. Didn't sound bad on AAC, interestingly enough, when I used other Bluetooth DACs that were connected with AAC, hardwired to my IEM, that's still using Bluetooth protocols to transmit the data from my phone to the amp and then obviously into the wire into my IEM. And that's things like the Quidlex 5K, which is amazing and has parametric EQ, but admittedly the amp leaves a little bit less to be desired. Now my XB2 Balance Duo is a decent uh, power supply for wire. It sounds very dynamic and punchy and has a lot of depth to it. Um, this was very comparable to that, even on the AAC codec, and it's doing this purely in a TWS fashion. The other thing to keep in mind is your stereo imaging. You want perfect phase matching, obviously amplitude from low frequencies to high frequencies. You want all of this to match so you have a really coherent, clean imaging presentation. And that's, those are the areas where the GoPods do the best. They sound very, very close to being on a wire, and this is comparing it to higher quality DAC. So even if you use like an Apple dongle, for example, and you're used to a sound signature that your IEMs provide, switching to a GoPod is not going to totally crush or take away from their audio performance, but now you can be wire free. So there's a huge level of convenience there. Now there's a lot of power to back that up too. It has 120 milliwatts at 32 ohms and it does 53 milliwatts or full four volts at 300 ohms. So they get very loud. It can drive very sensitive IEMs obviously, but some that are a little bit more power hungry or benefit from greater power. These seem to have more depth to it. Now, um, what I think this gives you that flexibility and what makes this special is you're not just buying a TWS system, which admittedly, like I said, can have excellent noise cancellation or ambient mode uh, characteristics. What you're doing is now if you have a large IEM collection, you have three or four favorite IEMs, 
but you like the idea of going portable and not dealing with the wire. The GoPod is one of the only products on the market, period, that can completely free you from a cable, but still sound excellent. Now it's even further uh, extended when you look at the LDAC performance. So if you have a more modern uh, Android device that can support it, you almost cannot tell the difference from wire or wireless. It is so clean. And when you have the Cirrus Logic uh, DACs or the amps that are powering your IEMs, it sounds amazing. I mean, it's very hard to tell. Now on the app that they have, which is um, a very limited app, that's where you do the firmware updates, which requires manually importing your own files. So it's a little bit more cumbersome, but you can change the filters too. They have a slow and a fast filter. They have the ability to go to phase matching versus low latency, um, or you can do NOS mode or no oversampling to run it in direct with no processing. So I ended up leaving it with default, which was the lower latency, um, a slow filter, and uh, oversampling was not disabled. So that's how it comes out of the box. I found that if you did the phase matching with the faster filter, it changed the treble sound just a little bit. And it didn't quite sound uh, the way I was used to on a more um, familiar DAC, I guess, for a lot of my audio testing. So it's nice that you have filter options. I would have preferred to give me some kind of parametric EQ. Now, if I did say they are working on an, an app to further enhance the experience with this product and at $400 that's a welcome addition but it's going to be several months before you see any change. I think if they had this with a parametric EQ it could be an absolute game changer because now you can pick any IEM you want, be truly wireless like the you know but then have the features that the Quidlex 5k gives you for customizing the sound maybe get rid of a harsh spot and treble or something like that. Now as far as comfort goes, I think it kind of depends on which IEM you pick and of course your ear shape. So as you can see, when you wear them, it puts the unit right behind your ear. So the weight of the unit is resting on the back of your ear, your cartilage. So depending on your ear shape and how sensitive you are to that pressure, it can lead to some discomfort after a while. Um, I've used these quite a bit for the past couple of months and I felt like after about an hour or so, I really do have a little bit of discomfort. Now, without using these and just using the SimGot EM6L with just the cable or even the, the Euclid or my Truthier uh, Zero Reds, they tend to be more comfortable when you have a lightweight wire drooped around and not the unit plus the GoPod. Now, when I use my Moondrop Lands, which are very small and lightweight, and compact, they fit my ear extremely well. I had uh, very little discomfort issues. I could wear them for two hours plus and it was perfectly fine. So I think finding the right IEM that fits you is going to make a difference on how comfortable these are. I also felt like I got used to the comfort a little bit after a couple months of use and it wasn't as bad. However, because of the design and having a little bit of a battery, it's just a different feel so you will feel it a little bit. Now the GoPods have a microphone built into it thanks to the Qualcomm chipset and this is what my microphone sounds like using an LDAC connection to my Android tablet. It sounds fairly clear but it's very ambient. It doesn't do, even though it's using their noise filtration and cancellation technology, I still think it picks up a lot of the ambience and echo of the room. Part of that is simply just because of where the microphones are placed. There's no proximity effect because they're far away from my mouth. So keep that in mind. All right, and now I'm talking to you using the GoPod mic connected to my iPhone, which has a noticeable change in sound quality. It's definitely more compressed and less clear, and that's just the byproduct of using a Qualcomm chipset on an Apple device. It's just how it works. So you can still use it for calls, um, and you can, like I said, tap the button to answer calls. Now, I recommend updating the firmware because I had a lot of microphone issues prior to going to the latest firmware. It worked much better on version 1.49, and 1.52, but this is what I sound like. All right, so that about wraps up the review. And this is an interesting product because it's one, very expensive, but it's also fairly unique. Now, not only is it unique, but it performs really well purely on the sound quality side. So if you're not one to wanna to deal with or fuss with apps or customization and tuning and just plug and play, this is giving you really strong depth of power and impact and it still sounds excellent. So if you have, whether it's a $100 IEM or a $500 IEM, you're not going to really hold it back using something like the GoPod. And then it scales well, especially if you're using LDAC or you can take advantage of Aptex Adaptive, uh, for example. So while not a perfect home run, the case is kind of, you know, I feel like the case could have been built a little bit better. The hinge design has a slight squeak to it uh, once in a while. You can kind of hear it. So I think it picked that up. 
Depends how fast you open it. And the case is huge. Now it's a magnetic close, so it does stay shut. Um, so I, and because of how difficult it is to pop these out, there's magnets holding this into the case. I don't think you're gonna lose them or anything if this case ever opened up in your back. It's really well secured in there. And you have this nice felt liner. So I think the case could have had a little bit more depth for larger IMs or maybe be shaped differently to be more pocket friendly. But I think it has to do with having the wireless charge, USB-C and the rather large battery pack. It's just a, you know, a design choice, I guess. So uh, overall, pretty solid product though. I think it's very unique, like I said, and it does work well. Uh, whether it's worth $400 to you or not is a different discussion. That's really up to you. So I'll have links in the description if you're interested in purchasing this. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'd love to see it the next video. Probably won't sound as nasally as I do right now because I'm recovering from being pretty sick <laughs> after going to Can Jam, but the show must go on. So thank you for making it to the end for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.